Okay, so here's the deal. This is what we're doing today. Uh, we have our new airflow fan, 2,500 cubic feet per minute. This thing's going to move some air for us. We have new ventilation hose. We're going to make this all connect to these grow legs. And then we have uh, some Cerolite boxes that I bought. I'm going to use those as junctions because I'm going to combine multiple inlet hoses, one from this lane, one from that lane, and then go combine it to a single hose going all the way down uh, to the heater system and then dropping that air into the heater system and creating a really big recirculation. So the idea is air will come up from the back in these grow lanes. It will be blown all the way down here. It will be sucked back out through this fan uh, into a union, which will then push it through the dehumidifier, which will be in line with it. And then it will go all the way down uh, into the, the stove box. That's what we're going to do today. Okay, so here's one of the problems that we've had in the past. Um, here is where I had the previous uh, air recirculation system coming out of this uh, grow lane. Uh, I've had to put, we used actually four inch uh, culvert pipe, uh, and I thought it would be enough. Uh, and that's what you get, uh, just all the engineering students out there, that's what you get when you take a guess instead of doing the math that your teachers tell you to do first. Uh, that's a costly mistake. It's a hundred dollar mistake right there I made. Uh, so that doesn't feel good. Uh, another mistake, this is garbage, um, is that when you came through, uh, there's this big gap, right? It's a horrible gap. I'm using tent stakes to keep this whole tent in place, just basic old camping tent stakes. Uh, and this created a huge gap, so we used uh, foil-backed insulation to try to seal up that gap. This is actually be the third attempt I have at uh, trying to get this ventilation system right. So this time I got some more lessons learned. I'm going to show you one over here. Let me move the camera. So, like I just showed you, there's that big gap that came in between uh, the tent and uh, the pipe that actually circulated everything. And we don't want that. We want airtight, as much as airtight as we can get. So with these Sterilite boxes, they have the lids on them. I've already put the one side on. And they have these clips right here. And what we're going to do, if I can do it, <coughs> gotta look good for camera here, is we're just going to clip that on. Ah, my head's probably right in the way. Sorry, guys. Put that into place. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole and the other side of this, that will be 12 inches. And then I'm going to cut a hole here, which is where we will connect uh, the ventilation pipe back. So this is uh, hopefully a significantly better idea than what uh, I've done before. And it looks like I already, I'm going to have problems with this kind of staying right in place. So I'll have to mess around with that a little bit. But I think, you know, if anything, I can always just screw them shut. Uh, use some small sheetrock screws or something and uh, keep them in place. But I like that idea. Once it's there, uh, it should stay pretty secure. Uh, we ain't going to be moving it very much. Okay, so here's the idea. I got these two items in place now. Uh, they're not cut yet, so we're just making sure before we do anything, before we cut anything, we're going to measure, uh, measure twice cut once, and for me it's usually measure about five times, cut, and then still make a mistake. So uh, that's not good. So we're going to really lay everything out first, make sure it looks right. And again, the idea, <clears throat> these are our interface, it's like an airlock. Okay, so you're on Mars, here's your airlock, right? We're going to take air from inside of here, and we want to get it all the way down there. Um, so we're going to have hose cut here a hole cut here to connect toes to, a hole cut there, and then we have to union them together. So the idea here is I'll cut a 12 inch hole here, 12 inch hole here, and then a 12 inch hole on the back side, connect this on the back side, have two pieces of hose come in here. And what this does is it saves me, I think it's about $400 for a 12 inch lot, a galvanized 12 inch ductwork lot. That's ridiculous. I think this is $699. Something like that. Anyway, that's the plan.
All right, here we are at the intake. Uh, these are the old intakes uh, that were bringing the four inch hose back. Uh, I talked about earlier, that was a big mistake, not enough flow rate. Uh, so what's gonna happen today, so I'm actually gonna cover up, uh, reseal the hole where these went down. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is, here's our lid down into the stove pit, and we're gonna cut it, 12 inch hole, have this run right into it. And this will make it so it's still easy for me to get in and get out uh, of here. You know, every day I come in here and I have to load it, so I want it to be easy uh, still to get into. Um, and since we're doing a retrofit, this is the best fit that I think I can do. Um, so that's our plan. Okay, here is the hard part. This is 24 inches, this is 12 inches, this is square, this is round. Have you seen Apollo 13 where they try to take the round air canister and shove it into a square hole or a square peg into a round hole? That's this problem. We need to fabricate something to where we can seal in uh, the inlet, this is the air inlet, and the air outlet and go down from the 24 inches into the 24. I don't have any ideas yet, but I'm working on it. So, we'll see how it goes. I think I have my idea figured out. Uh, first, uh, this is, as I said in an earlier video shot, uh, this is a cold weather dehumidifier, which means it has an automatic defrost function, and in this case it also has an automatic drain which is simply a gravity fed drain. Uh, what we want to do is recapture all this water from the atmosphere, just like what they would do on Mars, and then redirect that nice clean distilled water back into the fish tanks and reuse it. Uh, aquaponics already uses 90% less water than traditional agriculture. This is gonna be very important on Earth, not to mention on Mars, where there's not a lot of liquid water just laying around. Um, on Earth it's going to be important because NASA did a study, actually sorry, the European Space Agency did a study, uh, I think it was about five years ago, I'll have to find the article and post it uh, into this clip, uh, I just need to remember to do that. If I don't, send me a comment, uh, tell me to send you the article. Anyway, they did a study uh, using a swarm of satellites, and they're actually studying the amount of fresh water that's on planet Earth. And what they discovered is that all the aquifers that we know about uh, are draining. 50% uh, of them are draining faster than what uh, they're refilling. What that means is even with climate change and all those other types of things going on uh, and more severe weather, we're losing fresh water. Let that sink in. The planet is losing fresh water. And while there's a bunch of salt water out there, if you do any research at all, you'll see the amount of energy required to create fresh water from salt water is almost counterproductive. Not to mention that even if we got to the point where you absolutely had to do that, you would be charged more for a gallon of water than you would be paying for gas. That's, that's, that's totally not okay. Um, so one of the requirements of this system is that it does have to use 90% less water than a traditional agriculture unit of the same production uh, size would use. Stuff like what we're doing here is going to help us achieve that goal.